If you are looking for perfect artistic gifts for your loved ones when you travel, then check the elegant handcrafted ceramics at the House of Raw. Use the code TSMOSH and save on your first purchase. Details in the show notes of this episode. Hello everyone and welcome to Season 3 of Travel Stories with Marsh. If you love the world around you and you love exploring different landscapes, cultures, cuisines and cities, then you are in the right place because here every week I will be talking to an incredible travel enthusiast who will take us on a fascinating journey around the world by sharing their travel stories. On the episode with me today, I have the very amazing travel writer, Sarah Headley-Heimers. Sarah is also a television presenter and an author who has recently released her latest book, The Lonely Planet Guide to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. With her many years of experience in the travel world, Sarah is definitely that person who has some very incredible travel stories to share. And I am super excited to go on a journey with her around the world. Welcome to the podcast, Sarah. I am super thrilled to have you here in the studio with me and uh, very excited to go on a journey to some very interesting places. Thank you for joining me on my journeys. So, you know, you are a travel writer Mm -hmm. and you have called Dubai home for a very long time. Uh, Of course, we're going to talk about the Lonely Planet Guide to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. But tell me, why have you chosen Dubai as a base for such a long time? Primarily because of the safety aspect for Mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Um, I was living in London prior to moving to Dubai And um, any woman who lives in London knows that when you walk home from the tube, you hold your keys between Mm. your knuckles. So you have a weapon ready if somebody was to attack you and you live that way as the norm. Mm. And only after living somewhere where you're not likely to get attacked on the street does that weight Mm. lift from your shoulders. And it's... It's life changing to be somewhere where in London, I wouldn't walk anywhere really on my own in the dark. I wouldn't walk through a park. So it is a very serious problem, safety for women around the world. Um, And in Dubai, I don't feel at risk. So that is worth its weight in gold. It's priceless. It is priceless. And, you know, I mean, most of us are expatriates here in Dubai and I have been here very, very long. And, you know, when you are a mother and you have your child just outside there playing and you know he or she is safe. And that is, again, very, very priceless. So, you know, Dubai really kind of ticks all the boxes as far as safety is concerned. Now, again, you're you know, you you know Dubai so well. So which is your most uh, interesting part about Dubai, you'd say? I like the old town. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the best thing that you can do in Dubai by a mile is the one dirham Abra ride across Mm. the creek, Mm. uh, particularly in the morning or at dusk when there's just beautiful pink skies and birds flying across the water and the creek goes out into the Arabian Sea and you have all the wooden boats, the traditional wooden boats Mm. moored along one side. It just... It feels like you're traveling back in time right. for the price of one dirham, 20 pence. You know, yeah, it's yeah. it's not um, it's not the most expensive thing in Dubai to do, but it's definitely one of my favorite things. OK, no, that, that's that's really a beautiful thing to do. And we will discuss a lot more about Dubai and Abu Dhabi because we'll talk about your your latest book. But now, um, where would you uh, be taking us on a journey to begin this podcast? <laughs> OK, so bear with me. <laughs> it sounds X-rated, but it's not. Mm-hmm. So I'm naked. Mm-hmm. I'm suspended in the sky in Tokyo. Okay. And I'm in hot, salty water that's as black as the sky above me. So this is one of the most surreal travel experiences I've ever had. It's an onsen 
on the top of a hotel. And onsen is a um, traditional Japanese mm. bath where the water is supplied from a hot spring. There's a hot spring 1,500 meters underneath Tokyo and Hoshinoya Tokyo, a beautiful traditional hotel in a very modern skyscraper building. Um, it's converted the roof into an open air onsen. And um, it's separated for men and women. And um, you, when you're in the onsen, you're not allowed to wear clothes because the water is pure and fabric, because of the chemicals in mm. fabric conditioners, etc., cetera, can um, contaminate the water. So it is gender specific. But once you're in there, you're not allowed to wear anything. And... Um, and I just arrived at the hotel and it was past midnight, mm. but it's open 24 hours and it's a long journey to Tokyo. Yeah. And it was just so lovely. They recommended I just go straight up to the onsen and just decompress from the flight, just relax, just float. And I felt very exposed, but then very liberated. Mm. And it was just a really wonderful Japanese experience and the hotel itself is absolutely spectacular mm. so I hadn't um, heard of the Hoshino hotels until staying at this Hoshinoya the brand is their sort of flagship for their most luxurious or unique hotels and yeah it's a beautiful hotel in the basement is one of my favorite restaurants in the whole world um, they do tasting menus Japanese style with French techniques and they the food is just stunning everything's mm. a masterpiece and then in between you have the rooms and each floor is done as um like a private rear can which is um, a traditional japanese dwelling it just feels like you're in the center of japan but also in its history at the same time it's a really special hotel it was the um world's 50 best hotels mm. came out last year the inaugural list and it was number 39 and it really made me think the list knows what it's talking about mm. because I can verify that that hotel is definitely one of the top 50 hotels in the world that you should stay in for that experience. That it's it's is, a really special place. It is. So that is why a journey in this hotel just is absolutely worth it. Yeah. So this is the Hashinoya? Hashinoya, Tokyo. Okay, that was that was a nice little journey in Japan, to yeah. Japan, and yes. uh, this beautiful hotel that there is in Japan to have this authentic experience. But you're also a bit of a cruise specialist. I am. Uh, yeah. And so give us a little bit, uh, give us a peek into the world of cruises and why you think that people should definitely go on a cruise once in their lifetime, at least. Well, for now, in the current climate... I'm quite shocked about hotel room prices. Mm -hmm. Post-COVID, they've gone through the roof. And if you compare like for like with um, a, a room, a stateroom on a cruise ship, you'll see that the value for money is just incomparable. Mm -hmm. You're getting so much more on a cruise ship. People worry that your um, stateroom on a cruise ship is going to be too small or claustrophobic on good cruise ships, the rooms are pristine. And when you unpack, you always have a little walk-in wardrobe. And then once you've unpacked and put your suitcases under the bed, it's a smaller space in terms mm. of, you know, swinging cats. Mm. But I mean, we're not on holiday to swing cats, right? right. We're out and about and yeah. we're, that's the other good thing about cruising is you get to see so many destinations. So you you are out a lot mm. of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, the, the value for money is just, at an all-time high mm. at this moment in time in the history of travel because of the post-COVID right. recoup interest rates. Hotel rooms are expensive. Yeah, State rooms are good value for money. On top of the value for money, the entertainment is usually free mm. and the food and drinks are usually included. Mm -hmm. So it just represents a really good value holiday. Mm -hmm. As a traveler, I always like to see as many places as possible mm -hmm. And that's also something that a cruise allows. Now, yeah. it used to be that cruise ships would stop somewhere for two hours or three hours or four hours, and it was a tight turnaround. Mm -hmm. You were on and off the ships. Now, they're much more aware of the fact that people want to spend longer in destination. So they're arriving really early, they're leaving much later, or they're even doing overnight stays. Right. So you might end up spending two nights in Santorini, yeah. not having to pay Santorini's 
a prime example mm-hmm. of somewhere where mm-hmm. you cannot get a decent room for less mm-hmm. than a thousand dollars in Santorini. On a cruise ship, you can get a really, really good room mm-hmm. and you can stay for two nights and experience Santorini. And right. in two nights, you can see a lot of Santorini. It's mm-hmm. a small island. Mm-hmm. So the um, the things that used to be less appealing about cruise have been addressed mm-hmm. in um, in the recent years and the value for money is just... So huge. I think what really strikes out to me right now and from what you say is that the value for money, mm-hmm. um, and it is crucial in today's, uh, you know, the times we live in because like you said, everybody's back mm-hmm. with this whole COVID rebound and people want to travel and therefore prices are just soaring. Yeah. So I think cruises just fit in properly and beautifully there and also the fact that you say that because that was also one of my reservations about cruises that Mm -hmm. you just do not get to explore a place Mm -hmm. because they just stop for two hours and that's that's not enough to really explore a place but if that's changing Mm -hmm. then I think it's a no-brainer yeah yeah but what what would you say are the best cruises around the world so I think what's essential is that you choose the cruise to go with your family setup. Mm-hmm. So if you are a family with young children, Royal Caribbean is the market leader by a long chalk. They have such amazing facilities for children and the whole ship has got a, all of their ships have a sense of fun. So Royal Caribbean, if you're traveling with young children, if you're traveling multi-generational, um, I think uh, NCL, which is Norwegian Cruise Line, actually American owned, but that's its original name. NCL has a very good multi-generational offering. So it's a big trend to travel with grandma and granddad Mm -hmm. and the kids. But there's just something, there's more for something for everybody across that um, portfolio. So there's more, you know, there's bingo as well for grandma and granddad to go and do their thing. And stuff for the kids there's race tracks right. and there's so know. there is a cruise for everybody yeah but so nonsense. the world of cruises is really so vast and the i think what really stands out is that they're all value for money and yes, in today's all. today's times i think that's very very yeah. important so that's fantastic now let's talk a little bit about the latest feather in your hat mm-hmm. the lonely planet guide to dubai and abu dhabi so tell us um of course a little bit about your guides um and tell us something about what is it about dubai and abu dhabi that people don't know about everybody knows about the malls and the glam and the glitz yes. and all of that but what is it that people don't know about and don't really experience because they don't know about it or it is not highlighted in the media? I feel like um, people don't realize how green and outdoorsy Mm -hmm. it can be. Mm -hmm. Um, Particularly now, we've got some really amazing little um, hidden gems. Um, Al-Qudra, cycling and uh, hiking. I Mm. mean, that really, for the residents, Mm. became a thing in covid but it's, it's remained popular. But I don't think tourists come to Dubai for hiking. Right. And they should yeah. because we've got some beautiful hikes, some beautiful outdoor terrain. Mm. And yeah, I don't think people see that as much. Mm. Um, in the book, I write, obviously, as I said, I love old Dubai. I mm. love that part of the world. Um, and one of my favorite things to do there is the frying pan adventures. Oh, yes. Food tour with yeah. Ava and her sister Farida. Um, it's so interesting mm. to taste Dubai through the ages. Yeah. And it also gives you a really um, delicious insight mm. into all the different communities who have come here, all those layers. There's mm. 200 nationalities. Which in make up UAE. Dubai, really. Yeah. Which make up the country. I yeah. Mean, not just Dubai, yeah. Way beyond a food tour. It's mm. a, you know, it's a historical. It's a culture tour. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely yeah. lovely. They're fabulous. So things like that I recommend because they, you don't need me to tell you about Burj Khalifa. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you can't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So, so beyond the glitz and the glamour, there is really a lot, you know, in Dubai. Yeah. Frying Pan Adventures is another yeah. really fantastic experience. Yeah. So then let's talk about your favourite destination, having travelled. Yeah. Definitely London. So I went back with um, Visit Britain um, last year and they took me on a, um, I think it's called Small Car Big City Tours. 
It is the cutest thing ever. They have, you know, the little mini, um, little mini Coopers, you know, the little cars. Yeah, yeah. So a bit of a British icon. They, they've they basically got those, jazzed them up, turned them into little tour cars and very eccentric or quintessential Brits turn up and they get you in the car and then they drive you mm. to all of the landmarks and it doesn't matter the weather, you're weatherproof. That's brilliant to have when you're on a trip in the UK. Absolutely, 100% massively recommend that. And then they took me to, on the tour, a place called Leak Street, which is um, now called Graffiti Tunnel because Banksy, the graffiti artist, took it over oh, for a weekend and had a can festival, yeah. like play yeah. on words. And the entire tunnel has been redecorated mm -hmm. in the most amazing graffiti and I lived in Waterloo mm. and I was like how did I not stumble across this so you were a tourist in your own city yeah and yeah. I am every time I go back yeah, because so, there is so much to explore right yeah. all the time it's and there's amazing. something coming up every other day yeah. and whenever you go back so it's definitely London for your favorite yeah. city in the world and the best you can see the best theater mm. obviously you can see the best theater in New York as mm. well but it's I think there's just something so atmospheric about yeah, London. I would agree. I think culturally it's also richer than New York. I mean, though I love New York, but, you know, culturally London yeah. has much more than New the York. The South Bank. Yeah. Also, I feel like there's an energy in the streets. It's almost like, you know, how you got this Mag 4 charging docks with Apple now. I mm. feel like when my feet touch London's mm -hmm. concrete, yeah. it's like zzz, energized <laughs> and I just feel, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's well said. I mean, yes, London has that energy, right? But... You know, when you travel so much mm. and, you know, as travelers, we know that things happen when we travel. Mm. So uh, would you like to tell us some of about some of your travel bloopers? I mean, things that have happened in your travel life that have not been very, um, you know, that yeah. don't kind of leave a good, didn't leave a good taste in your mouth. Or it mm -hmm. could be an experience that kind of was a revelation for mm -hmm. you. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything that you consider a blooper? I think going back to what I said about safety, for me, anywhere where I don't feel safe mm. kind of gets scratched off the return list. So um, I had a bad experience in Cambodia. I was backpacking on my own um, across Asia. And um, Vietnam was fabulous. Thailand was fabulous. Mm. And I got to Cambodia and it was just, there was an, there was an atmosphere to it where I was a little bit, mm, you know, I, I just didn't feel as safe as, safe. yeah. Okay. And then I was trying to like get back to my hotel before it was too late. And I'd been, you know, it's a long time ago. So I'm in an internet cafe that can tell you how long ago it is. Mm. Um, and I'd gone there just to say, look, I'm in Cambodia, you know, and I'm just getting funny vibes. Here's where I'm staying. This is what I just wanted to tell people where I was and just check in and just, yeah. you know, um, and then I wanted to also look at, you know, getting out of there as well. Mm. And then when I came out of the internet cafe, it was already getting dark. So then I was in a panic because I didn't want to travel anywhere mm. once it was dark. And the the taxi service was, you know, it's, it's guys on mopeds. Mm. So you hire a guy on a moped to drive you back to wherever you're going. Oh, okay. That was the taxi system at, okay. that, at that point. I'm in Phnom Penh, I'm in the capital, but just, it's not, it doesn't have the infrastructure. This mm. is going back a while, mm -mm. but it didn't have the infrastructure. And um, yeah, so I was, I was on the back of a moped and the guy drove straight past my hotel and drove me into a deserted car park. And I just had an absolute panic attack. He was trying to like get me off the back of him and I wouldn't get off the back because I thought, if I'm here, you can't touch me. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what his intention was, but somebody else drove into the car park. But when somebody else drove into the car park, then I really panicked because I thought they were oh, together. Right. So I was the scaredest I've ever been on any travel experience in my life, as it was, the person was like, what are you doing? What's going on? Yeah. And the guy like drove away. So so the person coming in at the car park actually helped, helped saved me from whatever was about to be my fate. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, I got I walked back from the deserted car park to the hotel and just said, get me out of this country, please. Now I'm not leaving the hotel until I want some kind of safe transit to yeah. a port or an airport. And yeah, it was. Was it was it an experience that kind of taught you what not to do when, say, you're in Cambodia next or any other country? <sighs> I just yeah. wouldn't go back without. Yeah. A group. Without, yeah, I sure. wouldn't. I wouldn't go back in that. But scenario. that's that's also a learning curve, right? You know now yeah. that if you go back ever, then yeah. you want to go in a group. I mean, things happen when we travel, yeah. and you know, you spoke about these unfortunate incidents. But surely there is a hidden gem that you want to tell us today. So, um, what is your hidden gem around the world? There's a four-star hotel called the Hotel Villa Royale mm. in Pagale in Paris, um, and it's. My husband took me there when we were dating and we stayed in the Victor Hugo suite and it's ridiculously opulent with, you know, big four poster beds and embroidered walls mm -hmm. and the TVs in a gilt um, picture frame. Um, and there's a there, it's a really nice hotel. I can't believe it's four star, but there's a little corner tub and it looks over the streets of Paris. Um, and it's at the foot of Montmartre. I think oh. it's probably affordable because Pagale is considered to be a little bit of a yeah. dicey area yeah. in Paris. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's right next to Montmartre. And okay. that was where the Impressionists um, all used to hang out. So Montmartre is the subject of some of the world's best paintings. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's um, such a beautiful area of Paris. Gorgeous. Yeah. And Sacre Coeur at the top. Yeah. And the beautiful views across Paris. So, yeah, I... I normally forget about hidden gems because they are a bit hidden yeah. and um, people will ask me, where can I stay? And, and Paris and I always remember that place. And I've been back since. And normally, even if I'm going back to a destination, I'll stay in a different hotel mm -hmm. because it's useful for me to have stayed mm -hmm. in as many hotels as possible in any destination. Yeah. So from a professional point of view, I almost never stay in the same hotel twice. But... When I go to Paris, I like to go and stay there. So really this is the, it. let's give the name It's over. the Hotel Villa Royale. Okay, in Paris? Yes, Pigalle, Paris. Pigalle, mm. Paris. Okay, we have that yeah. hidden gem from Sarah today. Now, um, Sarah, as a travel mm. expert, tell us what are the travel trends for 2024? Well, we hit on it earlier, mm. um, cruising, mm -hmm. but specifically Alaska, mm -hmm. expedition cruising. Okay. And um, Northern Lights and Fjords Cruises. Okay. So I think these are really trending now because anyone who's been in search of the Northern Lights, as I have, mm -hmm. across Iceland and Finland, it's just annoying, mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the success rate is abysmal. Mm -hmm. And the chances of you, you know, the Iceland excursions, for example, you drive into the freezing cold countryside at four o'clock in the morning and sit in a car for two hours. It's just awful. They're mm. they're awful experiences for the for the hope and chance to see right. the Northern Lights. And of course, the tour guides have to sell them all year round, even though a lot of the time they're going out knowing that there's no chance mm. of seeing the Northern Lights. I think when you're on a ship, if it's a nice ship, mm. you're having a good time. Mm. You are going to have a good time regardless. Yeah. So if you are in a beautiful luxury ship on your own balcony, looking up, if they appear, they appear. If they don't, they don't. Okay. If they do, amazing. What a bonus. The cruisers and are on the top of the list as travel transport I think so. This year. And fjords. And fjords. The, like, I don't think there is a better way to see the Norwegian fjords mm. than on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. We went on um, a celebrity cruises, a cruise to to see them. And the ship, I mean, we were sailing down the, the river. There was waterfalls, huge 90 foot waterfalls all around us. Mm -hmm. And the captain said, I'm going to do a three point turn so you can see. <laughs> and we're sat in the comfort of our lovely but, okay. staterooms Yay. with our open air balconies. Mm -hmm. And it was just absolutely gobsmackingly amazing. I and love and it. I did go hiking and yeah. I did get, you know, like yeah. like we were saying, there was there was nine hours to go and explore mm. um in destination. Mm -hmm. But that was definitely one of the best cruises of my life. And there isn't a better way to see it because you're seeing it from the water. Wow. In, in, yeah. 
in right in the middle of it, you know. So no, I love the way you describe cruises. It's just making me more and more attracted to, you know, yeah. go on one. You've just so, got to be, you've just got to do the right cruise for you. Right. If, if you normally stay in five star hotels, book luxury. Mm -hmm. If you normally stay in four star hotels with lots of kids, mm -hmm. book one of the, the, I think it's, you've got luxury and premium. So mm -hmm. Royal Caribbean, celebrity cruises, mm -hmm. they're in the premium range. So you just got to decide what, what your land travel is like and make sure that your cruise travel matches up And choose up accordingly. To that. And make sure that the, um, you know, the destinations are on your bucket list. Right. And if if they are important destinations, look for cruises where it's an overnight stay. Mm -hmm. if, if it's somewhere where you want to explore. Explore. You know, if it's somewhere where, if you wanted to go to Athens for a weekend, for mm -hmm. example, then there'll be a cruise that will stop in Athens. for so cruises. Yeah. For, yeah, okay. So, and then, but then you get to see other places that you wouldn't ordinarily get mm -hmm. to see. I love the way you're passionate about I cruises. I love <laughs> yeah. cruising. I'm, I'm always, I'm so, either... I've already booked yeah. or I'm in the middle of trying to find yeah. my next one. Fabulous. So cruises for 2024. That's what people should be doing. So what's next on your bucket list? Then having traveled so many places around the world, what is it that you're looking forward to next in travel? My in in cruise, I want to cruise around Japan. Mm -hmm. um, rail, I think, mm -hmm. is going to be a big trend moving forward. It ties into everybody's sustainability goals. Mm -hmm. And Orient Express has always been on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. That won't be in the next 12 months. It's mm -hmm. very expensive, mm -hmm. um, but it's on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. um, and a stay in the Beverly Hills Hotel in LA. So Hollywood, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's in loads of Hollywood films. It's, yes. it's just an absolute yes. icon. Yeah. So... I want to go and actually have a holiday mm -hmm. just in that hotel. I think mm -hmm. it would just be amazing. It would be incredible. Yeah. Well, that sounds fascinating. Do you also have a cruise that you want to go to? Japan. So, Japan, So right. that's what I'm yeah. researching now. I do mm -hmm. want to do the Alaska cruise, but mm -hmm. I'm afraid of coldness. Well said, coming from London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's what I escaped. Yeah. I have to say, if you are cruising, you need to have a health plan. Yeah. Like... You need to have some rules about, you know, skip breakfast or, you know, do your 5K in the morning mm. because the temptation is huge. Mm. There's going to be like 10 restaurants at least probably mm -hmm. and the food's going to be good. And, and yeah, the, and the wine and is going to be good. It's, and it's yeah. all inclusive and oh, you can yeah. have whatever you want. Yeah. And it's, you know, if you've never done a cruise as well, imagine a Dubai brunch that doesn't end for a week. Oh, Lord. That's what a cruise is like, right? Oh, so God. you have to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, but that's a good tip. That's yeah, a very good control, tip. You yeah. have to control yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. I mean, I really wish you all the best and I hope you get to go on this fabulous Japan cruise and you go and stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel and lead a Hollywood <laughs> life for a bit. And thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today, uh, Sarah. This has been really incredible and especially talking about cruises and really I think it's it's been very inspiring for a lot of listeners out there to definitely go on a cruise this year. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let us know what you thought of today's episode. Until the next time, safe travels and keep adventuring. 